Now we want to get into some of the fun stuff, and that is taking what we have here and creating some cool procedural animation around it or on top of it or from it. So we're going to use the, the MASH tool set for doing this. So I have a separate MASH UI here where I can create a MASH network and access the editor. Uh, but it's also here in my tool shelf right here. So my motion graphics tool shelf consolidates a lot of this stuff. I'm actually going to first find an object that I want to use for MASH. So you generally start with a piece of geometry, and it could be anything. It could be some, as simple as a cube or something more complex. And I'm going to take that and I'm going to generate a MASH network out of it. Now what I've done is I've created a, a MASH node that basically will allow me to instance this uh, in a number of ways. So I have the MASH hub, which is called the waiter, which is basically like the core kind of center anchor of the network. And then I have the distribute node, which is the first node that I'll use to actually control the placement as well as the distribution uh, and instancing of this. I can switch this to be radial and then add density there. I can switch this to be spherical and I can add something like a thousand instances of this and get something like this. Uh, or I can go into a mesh mode, and from the mesh mode, all I have to do is find the mesh menu, which is right down here, and I'll just use the outliner to middle mouse drag the logo right onto the input, and now what's going to happen is it's going to instance a thousand times around the shape of the logo, and right now it's just doing it kind of randomly, basically. That's why you see some spots coming through, but I want to do this in a more controlled manner. So let's go back to the the, uh, the mesh node, the distribute node, and what I want to do is actually control how the, the mesh gets instanced across the surface. So I'm going to switch from a scatter. I could do a vertex or I could do uh, edge. I'm going to choose edge actually, and I want to actually conform to the edges of this object using, first of all, a flood so that I get exactly the number of meshes as the number of edges, and that'll come up later uh, when I change the mesh. Uh, and then I also want to set up scaling so that it uses the relative edge length to determine the scale of the object. Now one cool thing I can do is I can actually go back to the original object and I can begin to manipulate that original object and you can see that will actually have an effect on the, the kind of offset scale. So I'm going to scale that up a bit so that it's kind of, a, kind of just a thin border around the lettering and then we're going to modify it. But you can see it still follows the motion just as it did before but it's just bound to it in a different way. So let's hide that once again. Uh, now one thing I can do is bring up the MASH editor. The MASH editor is a kind of a hierarchical view of all the nodes that I'm creating with MASH. Right now I have just a simple distribute node, which I can select from here. But I'm going to add some animation on top of this as a layer, basically. Uh, and I'll use uh, the, the signal node, which is a combination of a few different things. You can create noise with this. You can create... Uh, randomness, you can create um, sine, wave type animations, and so on. So right now, if I play this back, you can see that it's just kind of this jiggly noise. I might want to amplify that. Actually, let's scrub through here. I might want to amplify that across different axes, so I'll bump up the other axes. May want to add some rotation as well, so that I'm getting kind of a, more of an undulating type effect. And I can scrub through to kind of visualize what this looks like. The problem now is this is going to happen over the entire animation happens at the end, it happens at the beginning, and so on. So what I want to do is actually control this in different ways. Now, I could use a manipulator to go in and control it on and off using like a, a transform. What I want to do is just do a quick animation. So there's lots of tutorials online about how to do this stuff, by the way. I'm just showing you a couple of examples. So we're going to go to the strength setting here. And with strength, I've got two strength values. This turns it on and off, basically. One is uniform. And the other one is, is more of a random. So each one kind of turns on and off at a different rate at a different time. So what I want to do is actually use the random strength to control that. So let's go in and we'll set our first frame, or sorry, our second frame, where we want this to settle into place right about frame 100. I'll right click and I'll key. And I'll scrub forward, let's say, to somewhere around 60 or maybe 70. And right about there, is where I want my animation to be full strength. So now what's happened is it starts off full strength at the beginning, and then it fades out at the end. But it actually fades out over a very short you know, second or so of animation. Now I might want to do the same thing. You can see it's a little bit too exaggerated there. So I'm actually going to use the regular strength on the opposite end of this. 
and I'm going to say right about maybe frame 60, I want this to be full strength with the standard universal uniform strength. And then right in here, wherever, I'm going to dial that out, and I'm going to turn the strength off. So now the strength of that node is going to build up from the beginning. It's going to max out right there, and then it's going to taper and fade away right around frame 100. So that's pretty cool, but I might want to also change the rate of the animation. So you can always go to a mesh node that's been animated, simply select it, and then you can go to the graph editor. And the same thing that I did earlier with the general motion of the M, I can do here. I can take the, the node and I can accelerate it and decelerate it just using the simple handle manipulators. And I'm just grabbing a tangent and just kind of pushing and pulling, adding a little weight maybe. And that's creating a fast out, uh, slow in, slow out, fast in, so that I get uh, the motion that I'm, that I'm trying to get. So actually, let's minimize the graph editor and we'll play this back one more time. And I should get something pretty cool. So a couple other things to point out. Uh, I may want to add, the, add something to the geometry later. You'll notice that these uh, instances are only on the perimeter, but I've got these lines here where that's creating kind of a simulated fold. I might actually want to go in and use those. So what I'm going to do is actually grab that object, and I'm going to use the multi-cut tool, and I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to create a cut, say across this object to there, hit enter. As soon as I do, it generates new mesh instances. So this is a live connection, which is pretty awesome. I can come in here and I can add details to the mesh. And by adding details to the mesh, it's just automatically passing that along to the, uh, the mesh network. And it's building the appropriate geometry. And it inherits all that animation. So I can scrub through here. And now I've got a few extra pieces that are going to build onto that logo, which is really awesome. So it's, uh, it's, it's pretty flexible and easy to iterate on and, and not very destructive in that, in that sense. So a couple other things I might want to do. I might want to add some, some additional secondary motion, other types of motion I can add. I can take the signal node and I can add a spring to that signal node. And what that's going to do is wherever it settles into place, it's going to add a little bit of a secondary bump. It's a little hard to see there, but you can see as I scrub through, it settles into place right there, and then it springs back and then kind of bounces back one more time. It just gives you another layer of kind of interesting animation. And then another thing I can do is I can add something called a trail, which is exactly that. It's a trail that will follow a piece of geometry that's in a mesh network. So I can get these kind of trailing effects um, that follow that object. And then there's a number of things that I can control with things like the trail length. I can have them short. I can have them long. Uh, depending on you know the situation, I might want to keyframe that so it starts out short and then gets long. I can control the width so they're fat or they're thin, and I can keyframe all of that in the same exact way that I did with the, the size. Now I probably want a different color in here, so I probably want to go in here and actually assign a more appropriate color after I've got all this looking the way I want. I'm going to use a, a Arnold shader and I'll use a, a kind of a light color to actually go in there and, and kind of mimic the, the color of the, the Maya logo. So let's let that play through one more time, and then I'll bring up a, a more polished version. So clearly, you know, you get the general idea. Clearly, I could polish that, and that's exactly what I did in this next example. So this is one that I spent a, a bit more time on, just kind of refining the look. And I also had the, the mash nodes kind of fade into the logo, which is kind of cool. So they start out kind of building the the shape, and then they fade out kind of quickly at the end. 